according to your experience, to what extent do you think gender has affected your legal practice? To share us with you, this is uh, this is quite an interesting question, and I think that uh, this experience is probably unique to litigation lawyers in the course of practicing litigation. Um, there, there are certain perspectives, even from uh, from bosses, you know, they tell me say that as a as a female litigator, you ought to be even more assertive, even more aggressive than the men. Otherwise, how are you going to 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 make your case in court? Um, but what I've always tried to reassure the younger ones is that that is not necessarily the case. It is more important to be effective rather than just aggressive. Uh, but these are some perceptions that. Uh, repeatedly pop up. So I think that, you know, unique to the litigation side, there is this uh, stereotype. This question is one evening. So, what advantages do you think female lawyers have for male lawyers? Uh, I think um, when, whenever we talk about advantages and disadvantages between uh, male and female lawyers, it seems, it seems the way that people, um, automatically linked to the marriage status, uh, children, yeah, family, family. But uh, for me, after after more than a decade practicing law, and I, I, I met a lot of uh, women, also met a lot of, lot of men uh, in legal practices. Maybe they have, they have, they, have mar they, they get married or not, they have children or not, they're diverse or not. They, they still have their own advantages and they are very successful. Uh, in terms of their personal life and also in terms of uh, career. Hi, Esther. Uh, this is a question for you. Do you think male and female lawyers are equal in terms of um, work performance or does each gender have a set of strengths that complements the other? Well, I wouldn't say male and female whether they are equal because I see them as a human. So I see them as human instead of you know, differentiate them between the male and the female. Because in, especially in our legal practice, as long as you can solve the client's problem, regardless whether you're a female or a male. In general, I think um, there's differences, but when it comes to a broader perspective, it's actually more on problem solving. Actually, both genders can do the, the job um, equally well. And in, in my team, because I have Wenjin and Jernin, so I believe that question came from both of them, where they complement each other. So um, I see how they work. For example, Winjin will be reading certain parts and typing um, the, the, the um, submissions or the affidavits, where Jenny will actually top it up. For example, let me read, and then we discuss, and then I give my views, and then Winjin will more on, oh, okay, okay, I never thought about this. So I think that active communication, the active discussion on a file is very important, regardless whether you are both female, both male. But again, I see them as teams, teammates. So they, their active communication actually um, complements each other when it comes to um, completing a task. So that's, uh, that would be my answer to Wenjun. So good job, guys, <laughs> in, in complementing each other. Thank you. <laughs> I have a question for Sharon. Uh, can you tell us some example of gender inequality in law firms from your experience? Mm. Um, okay, I think that it comes in different forms. So earlier on, that is one primary form that we have uh, we have witnessed as part of a uh, as part of the litigation team. Uh, so now as a young female. <laughs> Litigator, it takes some time for you to be able to build up the confidence for yourself as well as uh, with your clients. So I think that is one uh, pervasive form. If you're talking about law firms, I think um, maybe not unique to law firms, but professions in general, I think there is still a pay gap between males and females. So that is one thing that um, every organization would be able to address as an immediate uh, step as an immediate formal step to take to review to see whether there is indeed this pay gap that has uh, uh, came up over the years. Uh, and the second thing is, of course, uh, the third thing is, of course, uh, I think maternity leave is still viewed as something um, 
that will put a female lawyer on the back burner for you know promotions and things like that. But I must say that personally, I have not uh, experienced that uh, with my first child at another firm while I was on maternity leave. Um, I got an increment when I was on maternity. And over here, uh, when I was still you know, transitioning out of maternity and doing part-time, uh, I, I got my promotion to partner. So I think that these little measures um, that a firm takes sends very strong and powerful message to uh, members of the organization. I think that we should continue along these lines uh, in order to bridge the gap. How do you think we should break those planning slippers? So when it comes to common gender stereotypes, so um, as what Sharon previously um, highlighted, so the, the common will be, oh, um, you know, you're young, you're female, and then you look uh, rather, you know, short. You know, I was I was told the last time that oh, you were so short. Are you sure that the judge can see you? <laughs> I was like, it's okay, I can bring the stool. You know? <laughs> so again, I, 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 I just want to say, um, it's not about our gender, it's about quality work. And also if you're assertive, you are, um, you are um, I wouldn't say aggressive, but you're assertive, you are clear in your, in your work, in your performance. I believe the people or the opposite um, uh, um, parties will be able to identify and to acknowledge. And then when it comes to how to breaking it, I think, um, I personally think active communication is very important. So if let's say anything that is not uh, or in dispute or in disagreement, talk things out. You know, regardless of your gender, regardless of your background, regardless of your experience, most important thing is how do you resolve issues? Yes, um, I have a question for Sharon. Um, I'm curious, uh, does your firm have any formal measures to address gender equality? As far as I'm aware, no. And I think that uh, it's the same. I checked with, uh, I think Grendel doesn't have one, neither does uh, the Vietnam Irish team, which I must have either. And I think that this is something that we should uh, discuss. Um, and, and I think that, that there are actually steps, informal steps that are taken, you know, like uh, females are not set back and they're assessed on merits. But I think there is value in, in formalizing it and making it very clear to all your employees that we are not, um, we are not going to, to put you on a step back just because you have children, for example. It is actually a very common perception and you would be surprised um, how many women employees are very, very worried and concerned about this. They may not say it directly, but they feel that, oh, you know, if I take my statutory uh, childcare leave, my boss is going to think that I'm very troublesome and children who was always taking up my time. So these are actually things that people worry about and uh, it's not issues that are surfaced. So I think having a very clear uh, policy uh, for, for management, a very clear message would help to allay a lot of these things. And I think secondly, uh, apart from supporting uh, women in the workplace, uh, taking formal measures and things like that, we should always uh, encourage uh, men and our male allies you know, to take your paternity leave Go ahead and help your wife, you know, take some of the child child caring load because these are effective measures that will uh, translate into substantially um, lowering the barriers for women in the workforce. So I think that as an organization, there are definitely many steps uh, that we can take. Um, as a profession, I tried to do um, some some simple searches online. I don't think that any law firm has uh, any local law firms have. Um, have set up clear formal measures. I think we should uh, perhaps uh, look at what the forum firms have done or the American MNCs and see what we can uh, apply in the local context. Yeah. In what way do you think that the needs of a uh, female lawyer and male lawyers are different? And how do that be addressed better by a formal uh, policy or um, so that you know you don't have uh, issues with the naysayers and say, hey, why are you treating the people? I think that ideally we should move towards a profession and a society where uh, everyone thinks 
like how I said that. So you are looking at a person as a person and not because of his gender or his race or his socioeconomic background. Um, but as we are moving there, one small step that I have found helpful, uh, I don't ask my associates why they are taking leave. What is the reason why they are taking leave? I think that's irrelevant. Whether you take a leave to look after your, your parents or to look after your kids, I don't think you should explain that. Um, barring, you know, like, urgently for anything. But apart from that, I don't think this is something that has to be explained. So I mm -hmm. figured it out. In my early years, I find myself explaining a lot. You know, when I, I have to think very hard or I'm going to take a long period of uh, time off and when I go to my boss, I will have all these um, reasons, you know, to justify why I'm taking time off. And one day I decided, why am I doing that? I have the same number of leave as my male colleagues, right? And that is my entitlement. So I stopped giving reasons. And I realized that my bosses never asked as well. So I think that's a good thing. And I have told uh, the female associates, don't, and, and my secretaries as well, don't, don't feel like you need to explain yourself when you need to uh, look after your, your family. And uh, once that burden is removed, I think it does help a lot. Uh, so that, that probably addresses the time of issue. I think that the maternity leave uh, issue is a little bit more complex. I can see both sides. I can see the need to take maternity leave, obviously. And I can also appreciate uh, the male counterparts who think, hey, so now I have to pull away for, for four months, you know. Um, and I think that is, a, that is a conversation that is constantly evolving. In the papers, uh, a couple of days back, I saw some clickbait headline, you know, can I play golf when I'm on maternity leave, you know. So these are, these are discussions that we, I think it's good that, that these are aired and are brought to the surface. And I think that I'm hopeful that over time, um, as, as men take on more of the role at home, there is less of a divide as to women are the ones who should care for the kids and the family, and then just have to go out and work at the night. So this gap needs to be bridged. It's a societal gap. It starts from young, I guess, when we educate our own children. Um, Mum should not be seen as the only one doing housework and looking after you when you're sick. So, it starts from home, and I think over the years, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to push that in the workplace. Hi, my question is for V. Um, what practi best practices do you think would help a law firm move towards a culture that supports both genders? Um, as for this question, um, you know, um, I, I am from our field of Vietnam, and I, I grew up from a um, female dominant law firm. And uh, actually, in, in my firm, um, at every level, say for say for the level of managing partner, we just have one male. Uh, for the other levels, we we have around seventy to seventy five uh, female lawyer. Yeah, then um, I think that um, very consistently from uh, in every policy of the firm. We we don't have uh, we, we we have never ensured to uh, ensure that we will have uh, enough number of female or male lawyer in the firm. Does it allow us to uh, recruit uh, talents from both sides? Yeah, and then uh, after the recruitment, when we do a training, we do the promotion. We we offer equal of um, opportunities to both sides as well. I think it's for Esther. Uh, to do improve gender equality, some people have suggested from a different journey in the human resolution. So what are your views on this? Um, I agree that um certain affirmative action should be taken in improving, but in my firm itself, um I actually offers equal recruitment criteria or requirements as well as promotion um requirements where we look at the merits of the uh, requirements. We don't really ask questions oh, because when, you, when we have discussion among the partners, we have never raised a single issue on gender. Never say, oh, because this person is a female, she may have some issue at home or she may be having future um, a marriage or, or, or children issue that, um, you know, we have to stop her from promoting or we should stop at certain level or we shouldn't um, recruit certain people because of this. Uh, we never even raise a single issue on gender because we purely look at the performance, we look at their 
I, I wouldn't say KPI, but overall performance in terms of the work, in terms of their um, relationships with, uh, with us, with the colleagues, with the uh, other fellow members uh, in, in the firm, um, how do they uh, connect with each other is very important. And then it's an overall view rather than just pick on gender. They, they may have certain issues at home. I mean, um, I, I personally have experience where I've always been compared with my um, previous colleague who is a male, that you know he always will be in the office where I will be sometimes late or sometimes you may have to leave early um, to, to attend to your family issues or anything, but um, I, don't, I don't like to be judged that because I'm a female, I have these commitments. So um, I learned my lesson and I don't want my associates or my staff to go through the same process that I went through. So I always apply equal opportunity in the promotion, in um, even recruitment. As long as you can show me your capability, you can solve problem, you think um, critically, you can help me, you can assist me in any ways, you're good. You're good to go, you're good for hire, you're good for promotion. Uh, I have another question for Sharon. Uh, do you think that pe uh, people expect a woman lawyer should have a certain physical appearance? <laughs> as, as funny as this might sound, but yeah, I think all, most of us here would have encountered this at some point. Um, what advantages or challenges do you think uh, women who do have are not married or do have children? If, what, what challenges or advantages do they have compared to married women? The most obvious reason will be, of course, um, unmarried women, they are more flexible in terms of their time management and they can spend more time at work or they can meet more clients, they can be out to, to the market. And then, whereas for married women, you will have certain time where you have to be home, you know. Like for me, myself, I, I just gave birth to, to a baby girl last, last year. Oh, I'm still a breastfeeding mom. So that's why from time to time you see me disappear because I'll be somewhere <laughs> doing my job. So these are the restrictions where, you know, um, unfortunately, male will not be able to do it. It's not that they don't want to help, it's just that they can't meet naturally. <laughs> so they would, I, and my partners, uh, I just have to be very grateful that my partners, they are very understanding. They, they, during my pregnancy, they would just tell me, you know, I think you should just take a break and rest. Because you have been, you know, very, very active. I, what my Doa will say is okay, no problem. Because I know they, they actually are really concerning about my health rather than, you know, being a gender thing is not. So we, we just have to be, um, we, we have to understand the party's intention. Like, for example, they, they really, out of um, uh, 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 reasonableness and out of um, caring, they ask those questions and we shouldn't take it uh, in, in, in an offensive manner. Um, but when it comes to um, payroll, um, I, I don't see there's any issue, but certain in, that there are actually certain industries where they, you can see a very huge gap between the gender and the fee, uh, the, gen, the gender payroll, where certain male will earn 3,000 and above, but certain females will earn about 2,000 and below because of their, um, their, their role as, as a mother or as a married woman. Um, but it, when it comes to legal profession, um, I have actually asked a lot of different firms in Malaysia that they do not have a um, different payroll or recruitment or even promotion criteria when it comes to gender. So they approach the board, they just look at your performance. And then as long as um, you're justified as to, you want to take your leave, you just go, you don't have to explain because that's your entitlement. And then, um, yeah. That, that, that's the general practice in Malaysia, which is which I'm very satisfied with um, and, and I'm adopting it the same way in Malaysia, in my firm. So um, unless my associates have anything to highlight, which I don't think so, it's okay, I will, I will discuss with them <laughs> behind closed doors. Uh, but generally, um, uh, we, we, we don't have that kind of um, payroll um, differential uh, or, 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 or gaps when it comes to um, gender, uh, female payroll or 
this question is for Sharon. What is your opinion on the current mentoring system in the legal field in terms of uh, pupillage, internship, or maybe between senior and uh, junior associates? I think that currently the different universities may have set up a mentoring system. So for NUS, we have the LAMP system where practitioners are matched to one student every year. Uh, so that is the formal um, mentoring uh, framework that we have. I think SMU would have uh, their own as well. Um, but apart from these, um, I think that there is no, there, there isn't a very systemic um, mentoring framework that has been developed, especially to mentor uh, young female lawyers. Uh, especially, I think in my time as well, it was, it was mentoring, finding a mentor was something that it, it's not something that you can easily do. Like, where do I even find a mentor, right? Uh, but over the years, what I've realized is that at different stages of your practice, there is always someone that you can mentor. You don't have to wait till your senior partner to mentor someone because you can always mentor the younger ones. And uh, they, they do appreciate that kind of mentorship because you are closer to them in terms of practicing years, closer to them in terms of age, and the relevant the relevance of your advice uh, may be even better for them. Uh, for myself, I do look for uh, women that I admire, and then I, I will speak to them about, their, about how they have uh, developed themselves as well as their business. So it's not necessarily confined to the legal space. I do have mentors who run their own businesses, and I think they're having a fresh perspective because sometimes they would tell, you know, I can go to them with a certain problem that I face. And then they say, oh, but why is this a problem? You know, in, in our area, this is not a problem and this is how we resolve it. And it does give you uh, a fresh um, perspective. So I think that mentorship is, is very, very important. I think that uh, each one of us um, have the responsibility to mentor uh, our younger ones. Um, so my question is for Sharon. Um, as a female lawyer who has reached a certain position of power, like partner, senior partner, or partner, and for some of us who aspire to reach there in the future, so what can we do to have a meaningful impact on gender equality in legal practice? Mm -hmm. um, I am hoping to take, take little steps, for example, this panel, by giving a platform uh, for, for young women lawyers to have the spotlight on them. Sometimes we, we attend certain panel discussions and we see a whole panel of men and one token female, or one female moderating a whole panel of men, and the optics just doesn't look that great. So I do try to find the opportunity to, to showcase some of the, our younger uh, women lawyers. I think that is one uh, important step. The other step will, of, of course, be mentoring. I think that having, uh, being able to demonstrate what steps you have taken to overcome challenges along the way is very important. One of the most damaging, um, one of the most damaging kind of uh, experience would be for a senior female lawyer to tell you and brush aside your concerns to say, oh, I've been through this before, you know, I had to work with it, you should overcome it as well, you know, just take it in your stride. I think there is nothing more damaging than that. And uh, there was a study that was done by the Singapore Law Society, and a lot of junior female lawyers have given feedback that this was a, the biggest obstacle that they faced, and a lot of them get discouraged by this kind of feedback. So I think every one of us, um, especially those who are in the manage, managing level, mid-management and above, we do have the uh, responsibility to address this um, mindfully and meaningfully as well. Thank you.